Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to give you some basic definitions of uh, sensation and perception, definitions that apply to um, just all of the senses in general. So we're going to start with just what is sensation and what is perception. So sensation is the, um, the picking up of stimulus in your environment. So that is picking up maybe a touch or picking up the light or um, picking up a smell or a taste uh, it's just or a sound just the picking up of the the different things in the environment so in this picture it would be picking up the the sight of the coffee maker and the sound of the coffee being made and the smell of the coffee coffee you're picking it up so your sensory receptors are going to pick those up in your eyes and your ears and your nose and um, those are going to send the message onto the brain and so when it gets to the brain, your brain's understanding of what it's receiving is called perception. And so perception is the brain interpreting and making sense of all of the information it's gotten from the environment. And so that applies to all um, sensation. So let's go on with some just some more definitions that we can apply to all forms of sensation and perception. So we're gonna start with top-down processing and bottom-up processing. Um, I like to use the example of a Cheerio or a Honey Nut Cheerio uh, because I think everyone's had one of these or, a, or some kind of cereal. So if you are to take a Cheerio or a Honey Nut Cheerio and you were to give it to someone with their eyes closed and they were to put it into their mouth and you were to ask them what what do you have? Or tell me, describe what I've given to you. Um, they could do one of two things. So if they've never had this object before, they've never had, maybe they've never had Honey Nut Cheerios, or maybe they just haven't had um, cereal. What they'd probably do is they'd probably tell you things like, mm, it is, um, it's crunchy, it's round, um, it seems edible, maybe it's sweet, uh, maybe it's grainy, um, it's small, and they're going to be describing this just based on what they're picking up in their senses. And so we will call that bottom up. They're starting with their senses and they're interpreting based on the senses, just describing it, it's round, it's crunchy, It's and they're starting from the bottom and they're going up. Now, if you were to give that same Cheerio, that Honey Nut Cheerio to someone else, and instantly they go, oh, with their eyes closed, they go, oh, this is a Honey Nut Cheerio, or this is a Cheerio. What they've done is they've bypassed the, the sensation part and they have interpreted it based on um, a past experience. They've had a Honey Nut Cheerio before, um, they've experienced it, they know what it is, and so once it goes into their mouth, they're interpreting it based on a mental construct they had. They didn't even have to go through that, hmm, it's crunchy and it's, and they didn't have to go through that, the, you know, starting with all of the interpreting the senses, they just go straight up and interpret it based on a mental construct they had. And that's top down. So you get a sense, but you're interpreting it from a mental construct, something up here from the top. And so I like to use that example because I think that these concepts are a little confusing. Um, bottom up is when you're just starting with the senses to interpret it. Uh, top down is where you're starting with a mental construct, something you already have um, that is helping you interpret it. Okay, so we're going to go on to absolute threshold. Absolute threshold is um, can be used to explain any of your senses. It's the point at which um, it is um, you're picking up that sensation 50% of the time. So it is the farthest away or the faintest of sensation that you can pick up. So here I've got a picture of a candle. Um, if someone were holding a candle in a dark room and they were stepping backward and backward and backward and asking you, do you see the candle? And they were continuing to go back. The point at which you're really not able to pick up whether they're holding a light, um, that would be your absolute threshold. They actually say that that's about 30 miles <laughs> on a really clear night. They say, you know, all things removed like trees and you've got just a, a clear horizon, you about 30 miles away, 
you could pick up that candle. Isn't that impressive? So the same thing, you can do this with hearing, you can do it with um, um, like a ticking sound. They say that's 20 feet um, with just uh, no sound. If you've got a, a ticking about 20 feet away, you can still pick up that ticking sound. Um, you could do that with sensation of touch, the point at which you're not feeling um, a touch anymore would be your absolute threshold for touch. Um, some things are beyond your absolute threshold. It's touching you and you don't feel it. Like if a fly lands and you don't feel it, it's too faint for you to pick it up. So the absolute threshold is the, is the point, you're the point at which that you, you're, you're extreme, the point at which you can just barely pick it up of whatever that sensation is. And then one step further, it's out of your absolute threshold. You're no longer able to pick up that sensation. Okay, so the difference threshold, this is another point at which, but this is the point at which you notice a stimulus has changed. So what this means is you're getting a stimulus, a constant stimulus, and it's gradually changing on you and you're not noticing it maybe at first but it's the point at which you realize it has changed so i've got two examples here um, suppose you're sitting in bath water and you most people like warm bath water unless you're taking an ice bath so let's say it's a really warm bath water and it is gradually getting colder but you don't notice it because it's so gradual but the point at which you've noticed that stimulus has gotten colder would be your difference threshold, the point at which you've noticed the stimulus has changed. Or if we go over, over to this other example, we've got sound. If you were to close your eyes and have someone increase the volume in your car slowly, um, you know, you would want to start with it on. So you'd start with it on and you would slowly increase the volume or slowly increase the volume. You could go, um, you know, one notch at a time. The point at which you notice it has gotten louder would be your difference threshold. The point at which you're getting a constant stimulus and the point at which you've noticed it has changed. Then we've got Weber's Law. Weber's Law is, is simply the greater the change, the more likely you'll notice. So just with the difference threshold, if you were to turn the volume up, you know, from 1 to, um, you know, 30, just 1 to 30 really fast, then you'd notice that. That's a greater change. Or if you were to go 1, 2, three, that change is smaller. So the greater the change, the more likely you'll notice. Um, so, you know, if you were holding the scale and you had, I don't know, a couple pennies in it, and um, if you were to drop 50 pennies on it, you would notice that. That's a greater change than if you were to drop one, two, three, four. And so it just says the greater the change, the more likely you notice the change. Okay, so the signal detection theory is um, is just simply our our ability to detect stimulus is or it's just different and it's changing based on um, our situation, um, what psychological state you're in, um, what physical state you're in, um, the intensity of that stimulus, and you could be in. Um, you know, the same situation, but be in a different psychological state and be more likely to pick up that signal than you were um, before. And so here's an example. So if we're in this parking garage and let's set the scene, you're in the psychological state of it's nighttime and um, there's no one else around and you, you, you hear a car start and maybe it's on the level above you, but it's kind of faint, but you hear it and it kind of alerts you and you hear that sound. And it's not even on your level, but it's the level above you and you hear that sound and you're, you're tuned into it. So the signal detection theory says because you're in that state, you're hyper aware, you're alert, um, you're alone, even though it's a quiet stimulus, it's far away, you heard it. But you could be in a different situation and not hear that. So maybe it's the middle of the day and there's lots of cars around. Um, they'll, you know, it's bright. You've, there's a lot of people around. You're, you know, you're you're not as as um, of nervous or anxious, and it's just a different situation. That same car starts and you don't hear it. It's farther. You know, it's it's up on that second floor. There's a lot of people around. You're in a different psychological state. 
state and maybe this time you're less likely to notice. So the signal detection theory is just, it depends on the situation, it depends on the intensity of the stimulus, it depends on how you're feeling. One time you might detect the stimulus, one time you might not detect the stimulus. And so um, that just helps us see that we don't always detect things the same way every single time. Okay, um, those are just the basic principles of sensation and perception. I hope that's helpful.